I'm Roger Lilly, the producer of Plymouth's Roaring Twenties, and I want to introduce you to Reg Blackett. The film you're about to see about Plymouth in the 1920s would have been lost forever had it not been carefully and lovingly preserved by Plymouth-born Reg some years ago. Because of shrinkage, Reg constructed a unit to transfer the old 35mm movie of Plymouth to a 16mm copy for us all to see. I asked Reg when his love of films first surfaced. It's going back in the 30s, uh, say uh, 1937. Started off with a 9.5. So explain to us, Reg, how you preserved the film of Plymouth's Roaring Twenties. Well, to start with, the film being nitrocelluloid and being old, it's, um, it shrunk. It won't go through a printing machine, nor would it go through a projector right. without uh, quite a bit of damage. As you can see, the film is already showing signs of damage. But the picture quality isn't bad at all, you see. And to save it, it would be to transfer it to 16mm. Well, they said it couldn't be done. I don't think they wanted to touch it because the, um, the risk of fire and, and that was in it, you see, with it being nitrocelluloid. And they didn't think that the, the subject matter warranted it. Well, it's a kind of a Heath Robinson adaption. Um, the projector I used was only experimental, it was a, an old um, film strip projector. And um, the camera uh, had a still device on it. And um, after a, a bit of experimenting, the, the results weren't too bad. Well, each item, say, or an item, could be about 200 foot in length. That's somewhere around about 3,000 photographs. And each one has to be photographed separately and, and lined up to try to take the jump out of it. But you can't get rid of all the jump. It's, if the film is really bad, the, the jump is still, still there. In Plymouth's Roaring Twenties, see Plymouth at a time when the city was becoming the shopping centre of the West and the most prominent form of transport was the horse and carriage and the slow, noisy tram running through narrow, congested streets. Join the 7 o'clock regulars as they meet in the morning at Plymouth Pier for a dip in the sea. If you want to join their club, you must parade from the pier to Tinside in initiation ceremony. If the water's cold, it's too bad. Join the crowds for the Plymouth Pram Derby, organised by the Palace Group from Union Street on a 10 mile trek around the city. A jubilant Mrs Richards wins the race. Plenty of prams available, there's a population explosion. Witness the first airmail sent to London from Plymouth in 1923. See Alderman Stevens, the Lord Mayor of Plymouth, take two sacks of mail from Millbay Docks to Chelston Meadow and a waiting airplane. First or second class, Mr Posty. A game of football at home park. Did Argyle win or lose? Well, actually, it wasn't Argyle playing. From Plymouth Guildhall, nearly 1,200 unemployed workers will need your support in the procession to aid Parish Relief, the forerunner of Social Security. Plymouth is still in an age of poverty with class distinction showing no signs of narrowing. If you're a worker, you'll need your flat cap. Affectionately known as Mr. Pottyfill Potts, the 25 stone landlord of the No Place Inn leads the King Carnival in the late 20s. His queen is Mrs. Main, landlord of the Granby Vaults. Were Devonport people always like this? Let's travel back 70 years to a Plymouth of yesterday, when life was slower, people were poorer, and Plymouth was experiencing the changes of the Roaring Twenties. <laughs>